Let's go back to our 1500 GPM semi foot ahead situation. Why don't we just go in and read and set and balance? Let's say we add circuit setters. So we've added the green circuit setters at, the, at, the, at zone one, zone two, and zone three. We've added circuit setters. We know we got a pump that does 1500 GPM at 70 feet ahead. And we're going to read and set and balance. What does that mean? We're just going to add a circuit setter to each zone. We're going to go into that circuit setter at zone three, zone two, and zone one. We're going to set it for 500 GPM. We work our way and we set them all for 500 GPM. And then zone uh, one's got 32 feet of drop. Zone uh, through the circuit, circuit setter at 500 GPM. Zone two has 19 feet of drop at 500 GPM. And zone three has what? Uh, 500 GPM and 16 feet of drop. So that's what we've done to take care of the pump at 1500 GPM, 70 feet ahead. That looked pretty good to you. We got 500 GPM at each zone. We've, we've given you the 1570 feet that was on the plans. Does that look pretty good to you? It's not proportionally balanced. Why? We'd say, Chris, it's got one third, one third, one third. Yes, but why is zone three? Why is the zone three circuit setter critical circuit for the pump loop at 16 feet of drop? Why would you have that at 16 feet of drop? Remember, we actually calculated the head that was needed to be what? 54 feet. And now we come along and added 16 feet on the critical circuit plus 54 to get back to a 70. In other words, we're wasting the energy through that circuit set of why would we do that? Why would we waste that 16 feet of drop? Why? It's, that's the question. It's balanced, but it's not balanced per ASHRAE energy code. It's not balanced through proportionally balanced. When you do a true proportioning balance, the pressure drop through that circuit setter becomes zero or it's going to be wide open. Of course, it's realistically all circuit setters are going to have a little bit of a drop, but the bottom line is that last circuit setter in that critical circuit zone three needs to be wide open. That's the message. How do we do that? Let's do a read and set proportioning balance method. And of course, we have circuit setters, a calibrated balancing devices, all the way up to 12 inch to do these. They do a nice job of this, and that's what we're talking about. And basically, you see these benefits and features, which is not really why we're here, but you can do a calibrated balance, you can do a proportion, you can preset, you got your drain plugs and all of that. ASHRAE says you need balancing setters, circuit setters. ASHRAE, this is out of the handbook, 1999, even tells you where you need to have a balancing device. So these are the circuits that they would recommend to you that you put a balancing device. You can do less or you can do more, but if you need a guideline or an engineer over needs a guideline of where you need to balance, go to this section out of the ASHRAE handbook and take the best available advice you can find. It just makes a lot of sense. So some guidelines about straight pipe on calibrated balancing devices upstream and downstream. And again, this is right out of ASHRAE, ASHRAE 1999, and you see the applications page. In other words, you do want some straight pipe if you can get it to make sure you get that plus or minus 5% accuracy we talked about. Plus or minus 10 is probably okay, but I think most specifications probably going to read and probably should read plus or minus 5 as your guideline. So a little sidebar here that keeps coming up, especially from young people. Where should the uh, circuit setter be? Should it be on the supply side to a cooling coil or heating coil or on the outlet side? Why do all the drawings, why does everybody who kind of understands this put the balance amount, put the circuit setter on the return side where the two-way valve is? Why does everybody do that? Is there some reason for that? And the answer is yes, there is. You have to understand air control. You have to understand air moving around in a system, and when you put air knowledge, air system knowledge, together with balancing knowledge, you begin to understand quickly why the balancing valve needs to be on the return side. Very simple comment on, on air and water. Higher the pressure of air and water, the more air you can put in the water. The lower the pressure on water, the more air is going to pop out. So air is always in solution and water moving back and forth. So in the terminal unit, you're going to slow the velocity down a little bit. So it's a place air has been known to come out of solution simply because you're slowing the velocity down when you, when you hit a coil. That's okay, but a cooling coil or heating coil doesn't work too well with air in it. So we pr would prefer to keep the air out of there if we can. Now, if we put a circuit setter or balancing valve on the return and you turn the pump off and on, right now the pump's off at 20 pounds of pressure inside of that coil. Let's say we got a little air in it. 
we turned the pump on, I jumped to 39 pounds. And I turned the pump on, jumped to 39 pounds. That's great because I just increased the pressure from 20 to 39. And what is the entrained air going to do in that coil as I increase the pressure? We drive the air into the water. By increasing the pressure. Now we can move the air over to the roll air tool, air separator, and get rid of the air. And the beauty of this is where the circuit setter is has an impact on how high that pressure becomes. I would prefer that pressure in my coil terminal unit to be as high as I can get it within reason. Higher the pressure, the more air I drive into it, the less troubles I'm going to have with air. So on the return side, got my 39 pounds of pressure, I got my 5 pounds of drop through my two way valve. In this case, I got eight pounds of drop through the circuit setter, so I got 22 pounds leaving. I'm at 39 pounds. Now, total pressure drop is 21 pounds. What's going to happen if I put the circuit setter on the supply side? What's going to happen to the pressure in my terminal unit that's now 39? Let's move it. I put it on the supply side. I now drop to 30 pounds. I'm doing the same flow, the same total pressures. But my effective pressure inside of my terminal when I move the circuit setter to the supply side drops from 39 pounds down to 30. And I drop to 30, it'll still work, but I'm not going to drive as much air into solution as I would at 39. So plain and simple, the proper place for a balancing device is on the return side, not the supply, because when you put them on the return side, the operating pressures inside of your coils run higher and you'll get more air out of solution. Very important concept everybody needs to grasp because it's been missed sometimes and it can really solve a lot of problems for you. Now moving back to our balancing problem here we had, let's do this uh, this, this read and set bit. We, we're, we're at 1800 GPM, 64 feet ahead when we just turned the pump on, remember? 36 brake horsepower. All we did was turn the pump on. No balancing, no circuit setters, no throttling, everything just wide open. Let's add circuit setters. Let's add a circuit setter to each circuit and let's do a proportioning balance. Let's see what we can make that happen. Remember, we want to wind up with 500 GPM in each zone. Remember, we want each zone to be 33% of the total pump flow. That's what we're after. So, Open up the circuit setters and two-way valves wide open. Let's do a read and, and, and set method here and make sure we know, know where we're going. First of all, where is the critical circuit? Hope you realize the critical circuit zone 3 is not flowing enough flow. It's at 478 designs 500. What do we say the other goal proportion balance was? Leave that circuit setter wide open. We need to be able to read the flow there to make sure we got the 500 GPM, but we don't want to throttle there. We want the circuit setter in zone 3 to be wide open. We won't be able to read the 500, but we don't want to throttle there. It would be a waste of energy. So what we want to do is adjust the circuit setters on zone 1 and zone 2 to get one-third, one-third, one-third. And all we're going to do is we're going to go to the first circuit, circuit 1, that circuit setter. We're going to read the flow through it, which is 670 GPM. We're going to adjust it down until it's one-third of the total pump flow. Now, as you adjust it down, pump 1, the pump flow is going to go down a little bit too. So the true proportioning balance is I'm looking at the flow at the pump, I'm looking at the flow in zone one, I'm going to make zone one one-third of the total pump flow. And as I throttle zone one, pump flow is going to go down a little bit because I'm adding resistance. Got it? Then I went over to zone two. So I start zone one, I go to zone two next, I do the same thing. I got zone one at one-third of the total pump flow. I now move over to zone two and I throttle the circuit setter on zone two until it reads one third of the total pump flow. Looking at the pump flow at the same time. Now obviously the pump flow is coming in a little bit more. If I make two passes doing that logic, I'll have it balanced. Two passes. And what I'm after is to get zone one to be one third of the total pump flow, zone two to be one third of the total pump flow. With two passes, I can do that. And if I got one third and one third, what's left with zone three? It's got to be one third. Come on, guys, it's that simple. But I've left circuit setter on zone three wide open. I want it to stay open. That's my test to see if I'm proportioning balance. So now I've done zone two bit. I make two passes, making sure so each one of them has got 33% of the total flow. And where do I wind up? I just did my zone two, my second pass. And once I redo this twice, basically I've got 33% of 
flow to each zone. It will not be 500 GPM yet because I haven't slowed the pump down, I haven't trimmed the pump and power. What am I after? I'm after it to be one third, one third, one third. So now when I've done the two passes, my pump is back to 1760 GPM at 65 feet ahead. My proportioning balance is done. I've got each zone at one third, one third, one third. I've got zone three circuits that are wide open. I haven't done anything to pump yet. The throttle valve of the pump is still wide open. And I now have shifted the system curve over to 1760 GPM at 65 feet ahead. Now what do I do? So what's happened now? Repeating myself to make sure you understand this, I'm after 500 each, but the first step is the proportioning balance. Once I've done those two zones and I've got a proportioning balance, I'm through with the balance. Now I've got a pump and power, I got a pump and triller, pump and impeller trimming problem. I've got a problem to trim the pump impeller. I'll put a verbal speed drive and slow it down. Wait a minute, what are you telling me? I'm saying I got 587 GPM zone one, zone two and zone three. Each zone is one third of the total and the total now is 1760 GPM. I only need 1500 but I'm giving you 1760 because I have not throttled the pump and I'm producing my brake horsepower still up pretty high. So the message is I have proportioning balances, we're there. What do we do next? Well, we throttle the triple duty valve and when we throttle the triple duty valve, lo and behold, if I take 16 feet of drop through the triple duty valve, I keep the circuit setter on zone one wide open, I'm magically back to 500 GPM zone one, two, and three. My proportioning balance is done. Each zone has got the right flow, one third, one third. I've taken the extra 16 feet ahead and I've moved it to the discharge of the pump. So what have I got to do now? Trim the pump impeller, put a verbal speed drive on it, and take those 16 feet ahead out. Two things I want you to remember. Remember the critical circuit calculations first time around was what do we need? 54 feet ahead. 54 plus 16 is 70 feet ahead. Where was the 16 feet ahead before? We had it on zone three, which we said was kind of dumb to do it on zone three. We want zone three to critical circuit. We want the balance about to be wide open. We want to get rid of the 16 feet ahead. We don't want to have to pump, pump against it. So when you do a true proportioning balance, you're going to have the critical circuit in your building with the, with the circuit set or the calibrated balancing valve wide open. You're going to move the extra head over to the pump discharge. You're going to pull the pump impeller and trim it or you're going to put a verbal speed drive on it, slow it down. You're going to save the operating costs. That's simple. So let's make sure you get the total message here. When I go to the pump and I get rid of the 16 feet, I can trim the impeller or for overspeed drive, I back down to my 54 feet ahead, which is what I need for the critical circuit, and I just got down to 25 brake horsepower. Now you see why we looked at the pump impeller trim first before we came here so you know how to do it. So here's your test. If you're an engineer or any kind of balancing authority, if somebody balances your job and tells you it's been done per ASHRAE 90.1-2010 energy code, that they've done a proportioning balance, the first question you should have to that balancing person is, show me the critical circuit in my building. Where is the critical circuit in my whole complex? And that balancing valve best be wide open or it's not proportioning balance. Ask them to show you the critical circuit. In this case, is critical circuit is on three, and that balancing valve is wide open. They can't show you that that balancing valve is wide open. If they don't know where the critical circuit is, fire them. That's serious. Fire them. Because you have to know where the critical circuit is in order to do a proportioning balance. And that circuit, when you get through, should be wide open. It's very basic stuff. By the way, that would be your critical circuit for calculating the pump head too. So you're going to do a detailed pump head loss calculation. It's the same circuit as the critical balancing circuit. The two are the same. And we need to be teaching that to everybody so they grasp the concept. Good. You kind of got the message. We've done a good job here. We just met the energy code. If system is balanced correctly, one of the circuit setters has to be wide open. That's going to be the critical circuit. Kind of got the message, and you see the pellet trim is there, and I'm down to 25 brake horsepower. What if we add a zone four to this system in the future? 
And the answer is we missed a balance up. We've got to go back and rebalance. With a calibrated hard balance, if you add to the system in the future on that pump loop, the critical circuit's going to change. The numbers are going to change. You'd have to do a whole brand new balance.